Good morning, everybody. Uneducated economist here. Kind of a weird lighting situation here. I turn my hat around so you can see my face. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's kind of see my face. Uh, I want to share this article with you guys talking about the treasury issuance falling. Huh. And you get alarmed for that. And the quantitative easing that's going to taper going along with it. Now, this is something that a lot of people have like said will never happen. Like the Federal Reserve will never back off on their quantitative easing and the debt issuance is just going to continue on forever. And I just didn't believe that. Like I, I didn't know exactly what is going to take place, but I knew at some point in the future that the Federal Reserve was going to back off on their purchases and that interest rates were going to rise. And now I can only assume the interest rates are going to rise because it's going to be difficult for the Treasury to be taking on debt, meaning that there is going to be less buyers out there, less investors wanting to get into those U.S. Treasuries. The Federal Reserve has maintained that like confidence inside the U.S. Treasuries as they have been a huge buyer. $80 billion a month. I mean, you think about it, like if you are an investor in the U.S. Treasuries and you're worried about whether or not those Treasuries are going to continue to, you know, if you don't understand Treasuries, I mean, you got to understand like prices are inverse to interest rates. So as the prices are going down, the interest rates are rising. As the prices go up, the interest rates fall. So if you're an investor and you hold bonds, you do not want to see those bonds lose value, meaning that if interest rates begin to rise, those bond prices are going to fall. You as an investor will begin to lose money. So you do not want to see that. If you have the Federal Reserve standing there saying, hey, I got $80 billion a month, I'm going to buy into this market, then that gives you as an investor, it's like, well, you know, I mean, those guys got $80 billion a month coming into the market. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a buyer of these treasuries. And if you have a buyer of them, that means the value of them or the price of them will stay elevated. Now, the Federal Reserve has stated that they want to start backing off on this quantitative easing, pulling back the easy money or just the issuance of that $80 billion a month going towards the treasuries or towards the mortgage-backed securities too. I mean, it's $120 billion a month and nobody is quite sure exactly how they plan on adjusting this balance sheet, but they do plan on, you know, change, you know, reducing the amount of purchases and, and how much they are adding to their balance sheet. So now the treasury has stated, well, it is of these, in this article, it is of these economists uh, belief that the treasury is going to start issuing out less treasuries, right? There's going to be less treasury issuance. That is going to give the availability to the Federal Reserve to step away from their quantitative easing, meaning they can taper without really affecting the market. Like if they back off as much as the treasury is, is not issuing, then there would essentially be like neutral to the market and nothing should happen. Now, Something I got, I, I was thinking about. It was just like, okay, so if the government is going to issue out less treasuries, meaning they're taking on less debt, meaning like you know they take on debt so they can spend into the into the economy. I mean, this is why they've been doing it. it's fiscal policy, right? Monetary policy is when the Federal Reserve drops interest rates to try and get people to borrow money. Fiscal policy is when the government takes on a bunch of debt and spends that into the economy. Either way, the same thing happens, right? People either spend money into the economy or the government spends money into the economy. Fiscal policy, monetary policy. Well, we've been operating on this fiscal policy, and now they're saying that they want to back off on this stuff, right? Now, I'm thinking, well, if you're backing off on the monetary policy, that means, or I'm sorry, on the fiscal policy, that means you're not going to have as much government spending going on. That's less government taking place. If you have less government taking place, that's a smaller government. Where are the people going to go? Like, I mean, you know, either you're expanding government, hiring people, employing people through government. Or you're shrinking government and those people have to go find another job. Well, guess what? There's lots of jobs out there. So something interesting I was thinking about is just like, so people have said that the government will not be able to afford higher interest rates. Well, yes, they could if they were getting more tax revenue and had a smaller government. Is that not something that might take place? It, I mean, go read this article and listen to some of these other economists. It sounds to me very much like that is what they have intend to do, have intended to do uh, if if I'm thinking of the strategy correctly they're going to reduce the amount of US treasuries 
Federal Reserve is going to back off on their tapering. If they reduce the amount of treasuries that are out there, that means there's less government spending taking place. That means there's less employment taking place through the government. Those people are going to have to go find employment through the private sector. If they go find employment through the private sector, that's less government and more tax revenue coming in through that private sector. That almost seems to me like what's going to be taking place. At the same time, you've got this flood of stuff that's going to be coming in. I hear there's now 100 container ships sitting off the ports of, of California. I mean, look how much stuff. The, the warehouses are packed. The ports are packed. The freighters are packed out there. I mean, there's a ton of stuff out there that's just ready to come into the United States as soon as people just go back to work. I don't know. This is something that I've been thinking about since I read this article last night. Um, you know, one of the things... Because a lot of people say to me, it was just like, man, this will never happen. And it was just like, you can't, you can't say that it will never happen. Like, you can't say that. You have to take on the idea that it could possibly happen. Because if you don't, then you can't, like, put in the theory of what could happen or the most extreme. So, you know, I'm not trying to convince anybody of believing any one direction. I think a lot of people have a tendency to think that. I'm just trying to put out there the ideas that you guys can use in order to see it from your own perspective on what it is that has taken place. And now it's, you know, for me, I'm just, you know, a dude out in the middle of nowhere in a lumber yard. But, you know, even there, there's things that are happening that are taking place throughout the rest of the nation that you can easily see. And, you know, like that's the reason why I was able to predict and call out the lumber market so so easily is because when you have your hands on the pulse of the industry and you're watching as closely as you are to the macroeconomics, you can see things that are taking place that most people just don't understand or see or they're waiting for that information to come out. That's another thing. Like people are waiting for the data that I am living. You know, and that's pretty cool. I mean to see it like in real time taking place. And a lot of people would have that within their own industries. I mean, we learned that yesterday from the email, you know, from, from the letter email that we got from John, you know, and from what he can see from his perspective and in, inside of the supply chain. And that information is really valuable. I mean, every little bit that you see, that's why I talk to like, anytime I hear of anybody doing anything like they're a log truck driver, Hey, how's it going? I mean, are you hauling a lot of logs? Where are you hauling to? Where are you going from? And how far is the is the trip? But, you know, I ask them all kinds of questions about it because that information is useful. I mean, there could be a little tiny bit of information inside of that that really just kind of leads you off into a whole new direction. I mean, remember when I did that video of the lumber mill? And everybody was talking about shortages. They said, man, there's shortages. There's no lumber out there. And everybody's talking about you know, how there's this no lumber out there and these lumber mills are holding back on production. And I said, no, that's not right. There was a depletion of the supply chain. The whole, everything, all as far as inventory went, had this huge depletion. At the same time, there was a massive demand that came in. And when I went down to that mill and I did that video, it sparked a whole bunch of other people like I think I don't know if I was the first one to do it but it seemed like I was the first one and then other people started showing videos all over the place of lumber stacked everywhere it's because the supply chain was filling up I mean they needed to get that thing you know completely filled up before it finally gets down to the retail end that's why we didn't see it down there at the retail end but we could see it at the mill it's because this whole thing needs to fill back up it's like you know it's like cutting off water you cut off the water, the water flows away, then you pull the dam again, and the water needs to flow. Well, it needs to travel to get there. And it's the same thing with all this material. It's taken time to get there. Lumber was easy. I mean, they already had a well-established domestic supply chain ready to go for lumber. So there was no doubt in my mind that at some point there was going to be a return to all the supply. The prices were going to come back down. I, I called it while the prices were running up well over a thousand. I said, this is all going to come down again. And I called it, I, I feel fairly accurately. I mean, even on the timing of when the prices came down to, I mean, I said it was going to be at the end of summer and that's where it landed. Where they go from here is anybody's guess. I mean, I noticed that they're under 600 per thousand right now, as far as the lumber future prices go. And that to me is a very normal price for, for things to be at. I mean, I just, I, I do not see that to be abnormal at all. Um, what else did I want to talk about? I don't know. I guess I rambled on enough. I'm going to go into work. Uneducated economist, you guys let me know.
I don't know, can you guys see here? This, I don't know if you guys can see the numbers on the dice. There you go. <laughs> All right, uneducated economists, you guys let me know. 